So now this last video on membrane potential, which will entitle Membrane Potential 3, what we're going to be looking at are some end-all, be-all results of what we've established prior. And previously what we established was the idea of resting potential. We saw that resting potential, and this is a number you have to remember, in neurons, in nerve cells, is going to be negative 70 millivolts. And that's because of all those things that are maintaining a negative uh, resting potential, those things like the sodium potassium pump, leaky potassium channels, etc. Those things are going to continue to maintain this state so long as the neuron is not excited, so long as the neuron is not conducting any messages. But what happens if you do the following? What happens if you try to manipulate this and change this membrane potential? Can it be changed? Yes, it can. It absolutely can. That membrane potential can be changed. The resting potential, therefore, can be changed via something we talked about, a stimulus. You need a stimulus to cause change in the nervous system. And the change that's specifically caused as a result of the stimulus is in the membrane potential. This changes membrane potential. It changes the resting potential. And things that can cause this type of change would be uh, very simple things like uh, chemical changes, chemical stimuli, I should say, uh, pressure is going to be something that may cause a change in the stimulus or cause is a stimulus that causes change. Even light is a stimulus that causes change. All of these things are environmental factors. Things from the environment, stimuli from the environment that need to be received, integrated, and responded to. But how can this happen? It can only happen if you have a change in the membrane potential via the detection, integration, and then eventual response to stimulus. All of this starts by manipulating the negative 70 resting potential. Now, there are going to be several different ways to manipulate this. We're not going to get into the details of the steps associated with that yet. We're just going to talk about the ways that we can manipulate resting potential. And they're broadly referred to as the following steps, or, or processes, I should say. Resting potential can undergo something known as hyperpolarization. It can undergo something known as hyperpolarization. Hyper means extreme or overpolarization. This is going to happen when the membrane potential moves below, it moves below the resting potential. It goes below, it goes even more polar, it goes even colder, more negative. That membrane potential going below that resting potential is when the membrane potential goes more negative than the resting potential, more negative than RP. So let me just put this into context very quickly. You can simply exemplify this as, let's say your resting potential is what? Resting potential is always negative 70 millivolts. If I want to hyperpolarize this, I'm going to change it to negative 90 millivolts. What did I do? I went below the resting potential, negative 90 is below negative 70, and I became more negative than negative 70, I turned into negative 90. That's hyperpolarization in a nutshell. Now, you might be wondering, what is this purpose? What is it used for? Hyperpolarization is critical in the nervous system. It is absolutely essential because what it does is the following, and it seems counterintuitive, but hold on. It decreases the neurons, which is our functional unit, ability to generate a neural impulse. Ability to generate a neural impulse. Okay, you might be wondering, wasn't the point of this whole lecture to generate a neural impulse, to generate a response, a message is received and integrated and responded to? Not all the time. Sometimes you want something or some neurons to be inhibited. So hyperpolarization functions in the following manner. It is an inhibitory, an inhibitory mechanism, an inhibitory state that is very, very important in ensuring that not everything is firing at once. Sometimes you want some neurons firing, other times you don't want those neurons firing. You want to inhibit them. You want to make sure that they go very much below their resting potential, 
because if they go higher than their resting potential, they might reach something called a threshold, which we'll get to, and then commit to an action potential, which is going to cause a response. We don't want a response right now. We want to inhibit a response. The only way to inhibit a response is to go below the resting potential. If you want a response, if you want something to happen, you actually have to go above resting potential, which is what we'll see right now. When you want to go above resting potential, this is called depolarization. You are getting depolar. You are getting less negative, less cold in depolarization. In essence, this is when the membrane potential, which is originally at a resting potential of negative 70, that negative 70 becomes more, what do you think, negative or positive here? Depolar becomes more positive here, aka Depolarization is when the membrane potential goes above RP, above the resting potential. So let's make sure we put this into context correctly. Let's begin with our original resting membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts. If I want to go above resting potential, I must go to say something like negative 50 millivolts. That is a depolarization event that just happened. I went above resting potential. I became more positive. Still a negative number, don't get me wrong, but I'm just a more positive negative number than the negative 70 millivolts, as you can see here. Negative 50 is greater than negative 70, thus it's more positive. So those are our two sort of opposite scenarios. This will be utilized in great form when we talk about the action potential. So hyperpolarization and depolarization. Another final thing we need to understand about membrane potential is the idea of graded potentials. So these are going to be important in a response, in making sure that we do have a response or may not even have a response as we'll see. Take a look at figure 48.10 to see some nice figures of graded potentials and how they work. Graded potentials are just broadly defined as shifts in the membrane potential. Sometimes the membrane potential might hyperpolarize, it might depolarize. That graded nature of that shift whether it's very much depolarized or very much hyperpolarized, is essentially the shift that we're focusing on here. What we mean by graded potential is the following. The magnitude at which we have a shift in membrane potential, whether it's a shift towards a less negative or a more negative, a hyper or depolar state, that magnitude is dependent and varies on the strength it is directly related to and varies, I should say, not on but with. So not on but with the strength of the stimulus. If the stimulus, so let's take a look. What do we mean by this? What do we mean by this varies with strength of stimulus? The greater the stimulus, okay, the stronger the stimulus, what we'll see with graded potentials meaning that they grade themselves based off of the strength of the stimulus, they will then, once you have a greater stimulus, you'll have a greater change in membrane potential. Greater change in membrane potential because they are graded potentials. They can vary depending on how strong the stimulus is. A very strong stimulus means a very big change in membrane potential. Whether it's an inhibitory stimulus or a excitatory stimulus, that's not in the question right now. It just depends on how strong it is. However strong it is, it will result in an equally proportional and strong change in membrane potential. In addition, graded potentials are going to be things that eventually, after some time, uh, that they're going to begin to decay. Essentially, they begin to, in other words, die out. So they decay slash die out. So this basically means that sometimes, sometimes what happens is that they induce small electrical current or message. They sometimes induce a very small message small electrical 
message. And remember, that's how messages move in membranes, in, in I should say, neurons, through electricity, this idea of voltage. So sometimes there's a small voltage that passes through, let's say, an axon. What happens is if it's a very small voltage, it won't actually pass all the way through the axon. It won't, in other words, the term here is propagate. It won't move all the way down the axon, reach the next set of dendrites, send that information to the dendrites. The dendrites will receive the information, send it to the cell body, and that will continue down the next axon. None of that will happen. Why didn't it happen? Because the graded potential is dying out. It's become so small in its message and its ability to generate a message in the electrical form, it won't propagate properly down the axon. And therefore, what you notice is that sometimes graded potentials, they eventually decay with time and distance. So the further and longer these messages have to move, the greater chance that they will begin to decay with time and distance from the original, let's say, neural source. You have this source that's all the way at some point, and it has to send a message all the way down to somewhere else. If it's not graded strong enough, if its stimulus is not strong enough, it won't propagate fully, and it will decay with time and distance, as you'll see in figure 48.10. Essentially, what we're looking at in graded potentials, and especially figure 48.10, are graded hyperpolarization events and graded depolarization events. Take a look at that figure. Final thing I want to mention about membrane potentials as a whole is this idea of threshold. Threshold is going to be a number that you have to remember. Most are negative 55 millivolts. What is a threshold? A threshold is basically the point at which so if we have to get to negative 55 millivolts, let me ask you something. Do we have to depolarize this membrane or do we have to hyperpolarize this membrane? Let's take a look. Negative 70 to negative 90 doesn't look right. Negative 70 to negative 50, that looks right, right? We have to get to a more positive state. So to depolarize up until negative 55 millivolts means the following. You have reached the threshold. Once you've reached the threshold, you will always result in what the title of this lecture is, and that's what we're going to talk about now. It results in an action potential, an actual response that we finally are here at. Now that's going to be involved and it's going to be very detailed as we'll see in the next three flowcharts, I think. And so here we've reached a threshold. What's going to happen after that? That's the story of the next couple of flowcharts. So that covers our look at membrane potential. Now it's time to look at action potential and close out this lecture.